Hello, welcome back to the sideboard at Grand Prix Orlando. I'm Nick Miller alongside Frank Scarron. How are you doing? I'm good, thanks. Good. We are in the midst of running down our draft quick questions. So we've done a bunch of sealed content. Now we're moving on. You know, tomorrow's going to be the draft yeah, day. Sure. We want to know how to draft Soul Tide. Okay. And we're sitting down with you for that. And we're going to ask, firstly, how good is the clan mechanic for Soul Tide? So how, how good is Delve and how is it stacked up? Okay, so Delve is... You know, in a vacuum, it's very powerful. Uh, like, you can even see in, like, Legacy, like, with Treasure Cruise, for example. Yes. Getting to pay reduced mana for powerful effects is great. And uh, But the one critique that people have on it is, at least in a limited set, it's kind of counterintuitive. Right. Because, like, it's not like you can just draft all the Delve cards because they just don't synergize with right. each other. Like, if you Delve away your graveyard to play one big spell, next turn you can't just right. run it back because you're out of graveyard. Yeah. So, Diminishing returns. Yeah. You definitely have to find a good balance between cards with Delve and cards that power the Delve. But it, it's, it is easier than people think, though. I think right. people kind of overstate how much the cards hurt each other. In your experience, how easy is it to get the Delve going, and how many Delve cards can you really use? Um, well, there's some Delve cards like Hooting Mandrills or, I believe, Saltai Scavenger, yeah, the 3-3 Flyer. Three, three flyer. Yeah. Those are like, even if you're casting them for 6 or like 5, you know, that's still pretty reasonable for what you're getting. Yeah. So you could you could play like a good number of those. The big one's more like Dead Drop or like Treasure Cruise. That's where you need to be a little more conservative. So you probably only want like one or two big ones and then a few of the smaller ones. But uh, you also, it also depends on how many cards you can get to actually fuel them. Right. Okay, speaking of Fulham, what are the three best commons for the Soul Tide draft deck? Okay, uh, well, I'm going to say Debilitating Injury first off, because okay. that, that's just one of the better commons in the set. And you know, it, the, uh, the Delve strategy is a little slower, so it helps you kill an early creature so you don't take too much damage, and it just puts a card right into your graveyard, gets things started. Um, other than that, I'd probably say Treasure Cruise. Treasure Cruise is just extremely powerful. Yeah. And like, even though it does require taking a lot out of your graveyard, you're drawing three more cards. So you're gonna have more things to play to fill the graveyard up again. Um, and the big one that I just think this is like a pretty essential piece of the strategy, even if it's the mo not the most powerful card, would be Scout the Borders. Because that card, I mean, it basically says your next, like, it's it's like dirtily, meaning like, you know, it's not proactive, but it basically says your next delve spell is free. Like, you can easily play it on three, next turn, either play a Hooting Mandrills or the Flyer, and just play like a Morph along with that, and you're like caught right back up with tempo. Or it could just fuel like a dead drop on like turn like five, and that could just devastate your opponent. Being able to just play those super expensive spells yeah, at super such early. a reduced rate. Yeah. And you know, it helps you find the Delve creatures too, so it really just ties the whole strategy together. Yeah. What would your ideal Soul Tide draft deck look like? You know, if everything comes together, what's the whole mishmash? What's your creatures and spell base like looking like? Um, well, I would definitely want to get my hands on debilitating injury if possible. Yeah. Uh, Highland Game is also a pretty good one at, you know, just making sure you don't get run over while putting an early card in the bin. Fill in the yard, yep. Probably one to two Scout the Borders, depending on how many actual Delve cards I can get. Uh, Bitter Revelation is also really good at fueling the, you know, get you your Delve spells in your hand, puts cards in the graveyard. Uh, Rakasha's Secrets can also get the job done in a pinch. I like it more in Sealed than Draft, but it's right. still serviceable. Um, and other than that, I mean, Murderous Cut is just one of the best cards in the whole set, so I'll take as many of those as I can get. Not going to go wrong with yeah. any number of those. And uh, you'll find that people don't really like drafting Sultai, so you can get a lot of the multicolored cards pretty late. Like, you could, like, table, like, a Sultai Soothsayer, the 5 out of 2 5, and you could definitely table the 3 4 more. The Abomination yeah. of the Bull. So you, you want to focus more on getting your monocolored cards first. Um, like Sultai, the uh, four mana three four that whenever uh, four top in the sky dies, you right. gain four life. That guy, that guy's incredible. Yeah. He like keeps you alive. If you get like Karu Bloodsucker, they combo very well. So yeah, you just want a nice mix of like some removal, some cards that fill the bin, and then a nice top end delve to catch you back up in the late game. How would you rank the Sultai draft archetype amongst the other five, the other four clans? Is it something you're looking to go into, or is it something you kind of fall into? Well, right now, it's something I kind of look to go into, and that's mostly because I feel like it's underdrafted. Uh, people just 
shy away from it, they don't think it's that great. So as I said, you can like table the important cards. If I knew that multiple people were trying to draft it at a table, it is the kind of strategy where you do need to get all your pieces together to make it work as a whole. So if you if you get a good Saltai deck, I actually think it can be one of the best decks in the whole format. But overall, you do need to be careful with it. I'll definitely say that. But I, I definitely think you can go toe to toe with any other player for sure. What would you say is the worst matchup for a good Soul Tie deck? You know, the worst matchup would be if your opponent was able to pull off one of those more like uh, the like two color aggressive decks yeah. that maybe are like lightly splashing a color. If they can just like hit you with like a good curve and like back it up with removal, even though you've got like good tempo cards later, it's just not going to be enough to keep you. Okay. Well, the archetype looks pretty sweet. You know, all of the archetypes of have been sure. very fun, and people yeah. have been very happy about the limited format. So, we're definitely excited to see it tomorrow. Frank, thanks for sitting down with me in the sideboard. No Stay problem. tuned to StarCityGames.com all weekend long for the action here at Grand Prix Orlando. Mr.